Today's video is sponsored by Paperlike, which makes drawing or writing on your iPad feel more like paper. Hey, it's Chris. The iPad Pro is easily my favorite new device of the entire year. I had so much fun making this video because all of these tips just make my favorite new device that much better. The first tip of the day might actually be a little bit of an exclusive because I've never seen or heard anyone else talking about this anywhere, including Apple. You probably already knew that you could drag and drop from one app to another in split view, but you probably didn't know that you could select multiple items at once for a single drag and drop, whether it's text or images or links. So drag one item over and then keep selecting, kind of like when you're rearranging apps on the home screen. So select one thing that you wanna drag, whether it's text or an image or whatever, pull it over to the other side and continue to hold it. Then select more text or click on more links or images, whatever it is, and those will stack up underneath your finger until you let go. And you can even stack a bunch of specific words by just holding down on them and kind of rapid firing them over underneath your finger. And then when you let go, you end up with a nice unformatted list. So the new iPad Pro doesn't have a home button, but if you wanna get back to the home screen really quickly, all you have to do is hit Command plus H. The new Apple Pencil is one of the best reasons to get the new iPad Pro, and I'm a big fan of the new double tap feature, which adds some extra functionality. But you can actually customize what that double tap does. Just head into Settings, Apple Pencil, and then you can choose from switching between the current tool and the eraser, which is the default, or the current tool and the last tool used, or showing the color palette. And you can even turn it off entirely, which some people might wanna do because I know I've activated a few times on accident and that can be kind of annoying. For whatever reason, Apple decided to include a slow charger in the box with the iPad Pro. It's only 18 watts. If you consider yourself a power user, then one of the very best things that you can do for yourself is to get a fast charger. It's absolutely essential. Apple charges $50 for their fast charger, but I recommend picking up the Anchor PowerPoint 2, which looks great, charges at 30 watts, has dual ports, and will save you 20 bucks. And just to make things easy for you, I'm gonna put a link down in the description if you wanna pick one of those up. And just so you know, it is an affiliate link, which means if you use it to purchase this product or any other products, then a small percentage of that sale does go to support the channel. The Files app is a great way to keep your stuff organized in iOS, but something that's really handy is being able to tap and hold on the Files icon in your dock to see your recent files so you don't have to go into another app and dig around for them. And speaking of the dock, my iPad dock tends to get really crowded, so I love to use folders in the dock because it helps you get around that 13 app dock limit. You can also open folders that are in the dock while you're in another app and then drag apps out of them to create create a split view and get right into multitasking. Now, a lot of people depend on certain web apps, whether for school or work, that just don't load right in Safari on the iPad because it loads the mobile version. If you need to get the desktop version of a site, then I recommend using the Puffin browser, which can load desktop versions of sites automatically instead of those mobile versions, which so many sites default to. Now, I mentioned this in my recent iPad Pro review, which I'll link up down below, but you can double tap on any of the keys on the keyboard to wake the device up and activate Face ID to unlock it. And yeah, it is any of the keys. I know a lot of people have been saying and reporting that it's just the space bar, but is not. Something that I definitely couldn't do without on the iPad Pro is the command plus spacebar shortcut, which brings up the search bar. Being able to find and launch an app without having to touch the screen or get out of an app is super convenient. And along the same lines, you can also hit command plus option plus D to show or hide the dock without any swiping. One thing that I really, really, really wish that Apple Notes could do is show me two of my notes side by side on the iPad. Personally, I would use that a lot more than two side-by-side -side Safari windows, but whatever. Fortunately though, you can use the infamous notability to view two notes simultaneously. Just open one note, swipe left on the left edge to browse your other notes, tap the three dots on the second note that you wanna open, and then choose a side for it to display on. If you're gonna be doing any photo or video editing on your iPad Pro, and you need some extra space, then check into getting a NAR box or a WD My Passport Wireless Pro. 
Both of these drives are wireless, which is important because even though the new iPad has a USB type C, which lets it connect to all kinds of things, you can't connect an external hard drive, not yet. But these both integrate directly into apps like LumaFusion for video editing and then Lightroom for a photography workflow. And just in case you missed the name or the model, I'll link those up down below too. One thing that can make life as an iPad Pro user not only more productive, but also easier, is just a better understanding of how to select text. Try holding two fingers down on the screen until the cursor turns gray. Then you can move your two fingers around to move the cursor. And you can also use the same two finger method to select text. If you share iPad access with another person, like say your spouse, then you can scan in an additional face ID so one person isn't stuck typing in a passcode. Now for you ultra beginners, listen up because there are three ways to move around between all your different apps to have a productive, quick workflow. The obvious way is just to swipe up on the home bar, hold it halfway up the screen, and then choose a different app. Or just like on the iPhone 10 lineup, you can swipe left or right on the home bar to get to previous apps. And actually, when you're on the home screen, you can swipe from left to right, right under the center of the dock where that home bar normally sits to get right back into your last used app, even though the home bar isn't even visible. So if you're looking for a new iPad Pro, then check out today's sponsor, Paperlike, which is an accessory that makes it feel and sound like you're writing on real paper when you're using an Apple Pencil. Paperlike actually gives you more control when you're writing or drawing, thanks to the paper-like resistance that it offers, and yeah, it really makes a big difference. Plus, it reduces glare, and thank goodness, fingerprints as well, because the new iPad Pro shows those like crazy. Paperlike is great for anyone who uses apps like Notability or Procreate, and when you place an order, you'll get two Paperlike covers plus application accessories with free worldwide shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And you can pick one up using the link down in the description. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Be sure to let me know which of these tips was your favorite, which one blew your mind, which one is gonna totally change the way that you use your iPad Pro. I'm gonna link up the other iPad Pro videos in the Unbelievably Useful series down below, so make sure to check them out if you haven't already, or maybe even revisit them, because it's easy to forget stuff. Don't forget, you can follow me on at Daily Tech, spelled daily, T-E-K-K, on Instagram and Twitter and all over the place. And I will catch you in the next video. Later.